Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier and in my this particular video I am going to start simplest machine learning model and that is linear regression. Okay, we will try to understand the mathematical intuition of this particular algorithm in our this video. So if you have studied statistics for engineers or operational research, these two course, then you might have already studied this okay because in operational research in industry we use this for forecasting of demand in statistics for engineers we have studied correlation linear regression all those things right x axis may be temperature y axis may be sale of ice cream okay we want to predict at unknown temperature what may be possibly the sale of ice cream and according to that we will make our production for all these cases the linear regression is very much helpful okay so suppose i am having graph of n data points right so suppose this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 this is x3 y3 this is x4 y4 x5 y5 in general all the data points n data points can be represented as xi yi where i varies from 1 to n if i have n data points now we need to make one straight line which can be which can be possibly fitted in the best way in all the data points it is obviously not necessary that this straight line will pass through the data points but it should fit in the best way okay like here three data points and here three data points so we can uh, intuitively say that this particular line which is going uh, via the middle way in between uh, two side data points that can be one best fitted line okay and the expression of straight line is nothing but as you have studied in your class 11 straight line mathematics course that is y equal to a0 plus a1x or mx plus c form which is well known to us where m is the slope c is the intercept similarly here a0 is the intercept a1 is the slope we don't know the value of a0 and a1 and our aim is to calculate these two values okay now how to determine which line fits in our data set in the best way see idea is very simple suppose you have this x1 uh, point on x axis okay now what we will do suppose we have one predicted straight line that is this one which is possibly fitting in the best way in our data set so corresponding to x1 the y value is this one right this and corresponding to this x1 the actual y value is this right in our data set so what is the difference that is this y coordinate value minus this point y coordinate value that is this vertical line is the difference actually similarly like this for all the x uh, values x coordinate values you calculate the difference in between the actual y value and the value the straight line which is fitting in the best way in our data set is giving us okay so actual value and the value straight line is predicting if we are able to minimize this error okay this is called error if we able to minimize this error that is the difference in between actual value and the predicted value using the straight line then our job is done and using that we can get the value of a0 and a1 right so what is our end minimize the difference between the actual value actual y coordinate value and the value the straight line will predict okay we don't know the straight line so we need to calculate that so what we will do we will make our straight line such that the error becomes minimized so this error is also called residual okay so that is nothing but can be written like this see understand the expression yi minus of a0 plus a1 xi why see for the point x1 the predicted value y coordinate from the straight line equation is a0 plus a1 x1 right we don't know a0 a1 okay consider that as symbolical expression only a0 and a1 so the predicted value from the straight line is a0 plus a1 x1 and our actual y coordinate value is y1 so for the first uh, point x1 the residual or the error is y1 that is our actual y value minus the values the straight line is predicting that is a0 plus a1 x1 so similarly in general we can say yi minus of a0 plus a1 a1 xi so if you just remove the parenthesis you will be having yi minus of a0 minus of a1 xi that's all so here that is uh, i is nothing but varying from 0 uh, 1 to n okay that is all the data points if, if we have n data points okay 
now our aim will be calculating a not and a1 and for that we need to minimize the total residual okay not for single point for all the data points the error should be minimized right so what we will do summation of residual equal to 0 no that will be wrong because for some uh, data point we will be having positive error for some data point we will be having negative error that means for some data point we will be having the predicted value more than actual value and for some data point the predicted value will be lesser than the actual value so as a result if you take only summation of our residual the, the positive and negative will uh, suppress each other and uh, nullify each other by a huge amount so as a result if you take only summation of directly residual then what will happen you will be having there is a probability that you will be having very less error although the actually the difference in between predicted value and actual value is very high so we can take absolute part but dealing with absolute part is bit difficult in mathematics so what we follow simply we square them so as a result all the errors will become positive whatever negative that will also become positive and then we try to find out summation of that square residual minima okay so that will be one optimization problem kind of thing we can say so sum of square of residual should be minimum that will be our m so what is sum of square of residual nothing but summation over this particular expression square that is i equal to 1 to n yi minus of a naught minus of a1 xy whole square that's all now you have already studied in class 11 mathematics course how to uh, get uh, some minimum point that is take derivative and make that equal to zero but here our particular expression is dependent on two variable a naught and a1 right so what we will do we will take partial differentiation instead of derivative directly so del sr del a naught that is derivative of this particular sum of square of residual with respect to a naught should be zero simultaneously this particular sum of square of residual derivative with respect to a1 also equal to zero if you take derivative of this expression with respect to a naught and a1 you will be having two equations and two unknowns the unknowns are a naught and a1 because yi and xi we already know right our data points actually so basically two equation two unknown we can uh, solve using either Gaussian elimination or maybe Kammer's rule or maybe a simple substitution method which we have studied in class uh, 8, 9, 10 in school level mathematics course right. So let's take the derivative okay del sr del a naught that is if we take the derivative of this particular expression with respect to what with respect to a naught okay because we don't know a naught and a1 now for the timing those are variables for us we need to find out a naught and a1 such that they are fitting best way in our data set right so what we will be doing see this is nothing but what kind of uh, thing that is x square so derivative of x square is 2x but we need to apply chain rule because this is not exactly in x format so that is nothing but summation over 2 into yi minus a naught minus of a1 x xi that is nothing but derivative of x square is 2x and then again we have to take derivative of this particular one okay where we have assumed x so if you take derivative of yi minus of a naught minus of a1 xi with respect to a naught what we will be having this will be treating as constant this will be also constant only minus of a naught we have to take derivative with respect to a naught so that will result into minus one so if we take derivative with respect to a naught we will be having this particular expression okay and we have to make that equal to zero because we want to get minimum right similarly you take derivative with respect to a1 in the same way you will be having summation over two yi minus a naught minus of a1 xi now in the next step of chain rule we have to take derivative of this one so derivative of yi minus a naught minus of a1 xi with respect to a1 is nothing but minus xi so that's what here it is multiplied and that also should be equal to 0 right so this is our two equations we have got we can simplify equation bit so suppose we are considering this equation you just multiply with minus 1 and remove the parenthesis what we will be having minus of 2 summation over i equal to y to i equal to 1 to n y i this minus is coming due to multiplication of minus 1 then when minus 1 is multiplied with minus a naught it will be a naught and here summation over 2 is there but uh, 2 will come outside because that is constant so plus 
2 summation over i equal to 1 to n a0 and the third term will be summation over 2 into a1 xi okay 2 will come outside that is summation over i equal to 1 to n a1 xi equal to 0 so this is after simplifying the first equation similarly if you simplify the second equation you will be having this one that is nothing but uh, minus of summation over 2 into yi into xi and this minus will come outside of the summation and similarly 2 will also come outside of the summation so minus 2 will come as a whole okay then next term summation over 2 into minus a0 into minus xi that is nothing but summation over 2 a0 xi okay 2 will come outside so plus 2 summation over a0 xi and the third term will be plus of because minus and minus will become plus and summation over 2 a1 xi square okay so plus 2 summation over i equal to 1 to n a1 xi square equal to 0 so these are the simplified equation you may think why i have not written here summation range that is i equal to 1 to n because you can see for all the expression the summation range is same so sometimes it is neglected and you can neglect also but actual way is writing i equal to 1 to n because our data we have n data points so x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x n y n like that it will go right now see what we can do we can simply remove 2 in this particular equation okay and let us do some simplification see try to understand remove 2 and see our requirement is finding a0 and a1 right so the term which is not having a0 and a1 variable we will keep that to the right hand side so this particular term is ha having uh, neither a0 nor a1 so we will shift that to the right hand side okay and remove 2 because all the elements having 2 so we will be having this particular equation summation over i equal to 1 to n a0 plus summation over i equal to 1 to n a1 xi equal to summation over i equal to 1 to n yi similarly for the second equation you can see that this particular term is having neither a0 nor a1 so we can take that to the right hand side and then cancel 2 so you will be having summation over i equal to 1 to n a0 xi plus summation over i equal to 1 to n a1 xi square equal to summation over i equal to 1 to n xi yi right now what we can do see very simple concept of uh, summation summation over i equal to 1 to n a0 now our a0 and a1 is no longer variable these are constant why because while taking derivative we need to find out a0 and a1 minimum value so we are equating that to 0 that 0 will be having uh, we will be getting 0 for certain value of a0 and a1 only right so basically after differentiation when we are equating the differentiation with 0 that means we are having that particular value where a0 and a1 are basically making this overall residue residual minimizing okay minimize so or minimum so here summation over i equal to 1 to n a0 is nothing but n a0 because a0 is constant it will come outside and summation over i equal to 1 to n nothing but n plus a1 will also come outside so it will be plus a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi equal to summation over i equal to 1 to n yi so this is our simplified equation which we have got from the derivative partial derivative with respect to a0 okay then the second equation also take a0 and a1 outside of the summation and you will be having a0 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi plus a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi square equal to summation over i equal to 1 to n xi yi right now you can make the matrix equation and solve using Gaussian elimination or Kammer's rule or all right no problem in that but these are symbolical equation right so solving symbolical equation is bit difficult in this way so instead of that you can follow simple concept of school level mathematics substitution so get the value of a0 from the first equation what will be a0 value n a0 will be equal to summation over i equal to 1 to n yi minus of a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi then divide by n so we will be having a0 value as summation over i equal to 1 to n yi minus of a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi by n right then substitute the value of a0 in the second equation only here a0 is appearing so we will substitute in the second equation and we will be having this one right now what we can do we can simply multiply n in both sides because we want to remove this one okay 
so what will happen the first term summation over i equal to 1 to n yi and here summation over i equal to 1 to n xi is present so it will make this term minus of summation over minus of a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi and here also summation over i equal to 1 to n xi so we will be having this term okay minus of a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi summation over i equal to 1 to n xi or we can say summation over i equal to 1 to n xi whole square here this one is nothing okay this don't consider this as any value okay and then the next term this one what will happen as we have multiplied uh, both side with n so here one n will come so you will be having plus n a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi square equal to due to multiplication of n here one n will come so n summation over i equal to 1 to n xi yi then from here we can simply get the a1 value just take common here and keep this term in the right hand side and we will be having this a1 value okay which may look complicated but you have understood the derivation i think you can easily do a1 equal to summation over n i equal to 1 to n xi yi minus of summation over i equal to 1 to n xi summation over i equal to 1 to n yi by n summation over i equal to 1 to n xi square minus of summation of i equal to 1 to n xi whole square right so this is the value of a1 what is a1 we have assumed a1 is nothing but slope that is y equal to mx plus c the m value if we choose this one for our data point xi yi where i varies from 1 to n then the error will be minimized but not only a1 we need to minimize the intercept also so see idea is very simple what we can do see this one a naught what is the a naught a naught is summation over i equal to 1 to n yi minus of a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi by n right so you if you just uh, simplify this particular equation a bit what you will be having a naught equal to summation over i equal to 1 to n yi by n minus of a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n xi by n just split this two okay summation over i equal to 1 to n y i by n minus of a1 summation over i equal to 1 to n x i by n now you tell me summation over i equal to 1 to n y i by n is what that is nothing but average of all the y coordinate values in our data set and similarly summation over i equal to 1 to n x i by n is nothing but average of all the x coordinate values of our data set so we can say in simple words a naught expression is y bar that is average of all the y coordinates minus of a1 x bar right so you have got your a1 values so you can simply calculate a naught as this particular equation that is y bar minus of a1 x bar that's all and using this we have achieved our two coefficients a0 and a1 which will fit our all the data points in the best possible way with minimum error or with minimizing residual okay so i hope you understood the concept okay now what is the machine learning funda now as soon as we have got this particular equation which is fitting in our uh, all the data points in the best possible way suppose take one unknown value of x suppose this one for which y value we don't know but we can simply put that x unknown x value in our equation this one and we can get the corresponding y value that is unknown value we can predict using known values what a beauty of mathematics right so this is all for my this video in my next upcoming videos i will be discussing programming on that and that will be very very simple first you need to understand the math and then you will find programming very easy okay because once you know the algorithm you can write the programming by your own if you have some fundamental idea of programming right so this is all for my this video thank you for watching